Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are talking about long lenses and how to use them to do things with your filmmaking that you never thought possible. So we are on a 400 millimeter lens here on the Sigma FP and I have cropped in on the sensor to give an extra uh, 1.5 crop. So we're at the equivalent of a 600 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. The camera itself is maybe a hundred feet away from me. Um, and as you see, the background behind is totally blurred out. There could be a garbage tip back there and no one would be none the wiser. One of the reasons that long lenses are so cinematic is they are so different to how the normal human eye sees. If the human eye has the equivalent of a 50 millimeter focal length, then anything beyond that becomes more different, more extreme, more unfamiliar. So by using a 600 millimeter lens, we're showing people in a movie something that they'll never seen in real life. The way that the camera moves, the way that the background and the um, foreground interact with the subject, the way that space distorts are all very different than the human eye. Probably the thing that I use long lenses the most for is to isolate the character. On a long lens, the background disappears into um, oblivion, into just a bokeh mess of light and colors, and the foreground disappears entirely. Strangely enough though, long lenses also bring the background closer to the character. If you want to show someone on a rooftop uh, near a city, if you use a 50 or even an 80 mil lens, that city, that distant city that's miles away will become will stay miles away but if you use a long lens a you know above 200 400 500 millimeter lens the city gets pulled right next to the character they become part of the city they become almost trapped in the city and one of my favorite clips from hbo's the wire stringer bell and avon barksdale are having their final meeting and it starts off as a normal french over the shoulder with the city behind them on a rooftop. And as the scene gets more serious, go on to an 80 and then go on to a 400 mil lens. And as a result, the city and the bokeh from the lights gets closer and closer. It feels more and more claustrophobic. It also focuses in on the characters and makes them, their emotions more intense as their faces fill the frame. Speaking of faces, long lenses do in very interesting things to faces because they are compressing distance they're compressing the space of the head the roughly you know three quarters of a foot de distance or depth that's in the human head gets compressed on a long lens to almost a single plane so it brings the ears forward and the nose back a wide angle lens does the absolute opposite now there's probably a sweet spot of around 80 mils for the human face or most human faces but some people just definitely look better, especially people with um, pointy noses and uh, uh, ears that stick out. They look much better photographed on 100 mils and over. This is the uh, origin of the camera adds 10 pounds uh, because long lenses on broadcast television cameras are usually four and 500 millimeters and, and a very small sensor. So when people appeared on uh, TV, they often looked heavier than they were in real life. Probably the biggest practical effect of a long lens is that you don't need the camera anywhere near your act. So if you're using first time actors or people who aren't comfortable in front of the camera, right? The camera here is to almost 200 feet away. There's no camera in their um, personal space. They don't have people around them or watching them that can make a documentary subject or a um, non-actor feel very uncomfortable. With a long lens, you get none of that. They can basically have a private conversation uh, with the other performer and uh, the camera can capture it from very, very distant. Long lenses have long been used by directors and filmmakers to make stunts more believable. So if you saw a car start to drive down the driveway behind me, it would look like it was about to run me over even when it was a really long way away from me. That's because the long lens compresses space this shot from Black Rain, it looks like Michael Douglas is about to get run down. In reality, he was hundreds of feet from um, the car. The most often used version of this is explosions, where those cool guys walk away from explosions and don't even look back. It looks like it's singeing the back of their hair. They're actually on a long lens and the explosion is a very safe distance away. This is also used in fight scenes when people want to sell a punch. 
uh, especially if you have non-stuntmen or actors performing the stunts, the actor can be five foot from the other actor, throw a punch, and uh, the other, if the other actor sells it and flinches at the right time or snaps their head back at the right time, uh, and you add a sound effect in post, it will really look like the two people have made contact, but in reality, there was no risk uh, to the actor. The final big advantage of shooting with long lenses is that you can shoot an action from multiple cameras at the same time without showing the other cameras in their shots. So if you have two people having a fight scene, for instance, or um, people having a chase, as long as you are on the same side, which you should be anyway because of the 180 degree rule, you can have 10 cameras all on long lenses, all filming uh, the people running from a distance, and you won't see the other um, cameras in the shot. Uh, this is used extensively on chase scenes and um, car chases, uh, where instead of having the person run down a street 20 times to get the amount of coverage that you want, you can really have them do it twice and have 10 cameras capture it from 10 different angles. This is a much more efficient way to capture action uh, without burning out the actors, without having to do a stunt multiple times, um, and without endangering the camera operators because they are a really long way away. I remember seeing uh, Game of Thrones, some of the action sequences there, you saw these people up on ladders with these really long cine lenses. It's because they have a uh, you know, very tight shooting schedule, so they want 10 plus cameras on these stunts, on these battles, all getting some kind of coverage and not being in each other's way. Long lenses are definitely something that you need to work up to. You definitely need to have your uh, camera on a tripod. You're not going to hand hold or shoulder hand hold um, a 600 millimeter lens. And it needs to be a good tripod. You're not going to put it on a stills tripod because the weight of these lenses and the weight of the camera and how smooth you need to operate, you need to have not necessarily a geared head, but a very smooth fluid head, a cine head on your camera um, so that you can make these, uh, make the moves that you're going to do look good. It's also very easy to lose your subject when you're on a long lens. I did it multiple times setting up this shot because everything's so out of focus and it really helps to zoom out find what you're looking at, then zoom in and uh, start capturing the frame. That is my look at long lenses. Thank you to Sigma for sponsoring this and providing the camera and the lenses. I'll link to them in the description. I'd love to know what other people out there have been shooting on long lenses, what your experience has been, and uh, what your takeaway is. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.